G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about a family of uh, instructions called the bit test instructions. So they all take the same parameters and they're all based on uh, the first one, the, the basic bit test, which is uh, this, BT, that's the mnemonic. Uh, but there's also several other versions, so we've got BTC, which is bit test and then complement. We've got uh, BTR, which is bit test then reset, and BTS, which is bit test then set. So this one's just your basic bit test. Uh, this is bit test then complement. Here we've got uh, bit test then reset. I'll say reset to zero because that's what it really means. And this one is bit test again, but. Um, set to 1. Okay, so what these instructions do is um, test a particular bit. Alrighty, so first of all the um, parameters that they take, they're all the same. Um, register slash mem as the first parameter and the second can be register or immediate. Okay, it's important to note that um, there's no 8-bit version, so it's uh, 16 32 or 64 bits for these parameters and uh, yeah, no 8-bit version Gosh. ok, so what do they do? well, let's just have a bit of a look at a, a simple example first of all let's say that we've got um, something like mov ax uh, maybe 2 like this and then we could say bt um, a x and two. No, actually, it's one. One. And what this is going to do is it's going to check the um, bit at index number one in A x, and it's going to set the carry flag to whatever that happens to be. So they all set the carry flag. Set carry flag to. Um, bit 1 of AX. So we know that if we look at what we've just done here, move into AX2, um, AX is going to have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so AX is going to have a 1 just here, since that's um, binary for 2. So BTAX1 like this is going to set the carry flag to 1. Whereas if we did something like BT... Oh sorry, if we, if we moved a different value into AX, maybe we moved um, 8 into AX. Let's see, that's uh, 1, 2, 4, 8. That's a 1 right here. But uh, this one would be 0. In that example, it would clear the carry flag. Um, testing bit number 1 or bit at index 1 in AX would um, grab this one and put it into the carry flag whereas if we had um, with 8, if we tested um, bit test AX3 then the carry flag would be 1 again so um, that's bit 0, this is bit 1, bit 2 and bit 3 so it would move that into the carry um, ok, so that's pretty much what these uh, instructions do but there's some slightly more... Oh, actually, we should get through the other versions, actually. If we had um, the same as the same as this, mov AX8, but we had uh, BTC, bit test then complement, um, this is going to... Let me just rub this out a bit, and we'll get it a bit neater. 1, 0, 0, 0, B. Okay, so there's our 8, our mov AX8. Um, bit test then complement, AX3 is going to first of all copy this value into the carry flag and then it's going to zero it because it was a 1 so it'll turn that to zero uh, if we were to run the bit test and complement again BTC, AX and 3 straight after running it the first time um, a zero would be copied into the carry this time but the complement of zero uh, it would be 1 again so to complement a bit is obviously just a toggle it. If it's 1 it becomes 0, if it's 0 it becomes 1. Ok, bit test then reset is um, pretty self-explanatory really. It's going to set the bit to uh, 0 after it tests it. 
after it moves it to the carry, it's going to be zero. So uh, let's have a look. So bit test then complement. Um, we'll get rid of that. Um, we have R. Okay, so um, yeah, we're back to where we were. We've got uh, AX has got an 8 in it, so it's got a 1 just there. Bit test then reset is going to set um, that 1 to the carry flag. It's going to set the carry flag to 1. And then it's going to reset this to 0. Obviously the difference between bit test reset and bit test complement is that um, if we ran this again, BTR AX 3, um, it wouldn't toggle this, it wouldn't set it back to 1, it would just remain a 0. Alrighty. So after this, if we followed bit test uh, reset AX 3, if we followed that with uh, bit test S AX 3, this is bit test and set, uh, it's going to read this bit which is zero at the moment because of our bit test reset AX3. Uh, it'll copy that zero into the carry flag so that uh, we can jump or you know conditionally move or whatever. Uh, but bit test set is then going to set that bit to one. Okay, so that's um, yeah that's basically what the instructions do. Well, let's just get a new page because things get really interesting when we use. Um, memory operands and registers. So first of all, if your first operand, the operand that you're testing the bit of, is uh, a register, then um, you obviously can't test bits outside the register, so AX is, is going to look something like this. Uh, it's got sort of AL over here and AH over here. Um, we can bit test you know, this bit, we can bit test this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit. We can bit test here, 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 but it doesn't make sense to bit test outside. So this is bit 0 right here. Um, in AX, this is bit 15. So if you were to say um, BT AX and 16, uh, it's not going to check this bit just here. Nope, it's going to wrap around and check this one. Alrighty, so it wraps around. If, however, your first operand isn't a uh, register, if it's memory, then uh, memory doesn't wrap around. It just keeps going. So let's just say that we've got uh, this is this it's a really straight line. This is a small spot in memory, and we'll say that right here is the operand that we're testing. We'll just call it oper for operand. Um, if we're using a register as the second operand to say which bit we want to look at, uh, the interesting thing with the bit tests is that you don't have to stop here. You can keep searching. It'll just look up all of RAM. Um, the whole of RAM, or the whole of your data segment really, is um, yeah, just a gigantic bit array. So let's have a look what that means. Okay, let's say that we've got, um, this is in our data segment, we've got dot data and my byte array uh, db Say zero, 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 and one. Okay, so uh, that's what our byte array is. It's got um, four bytes in it, set to zero, 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 and one. And then in our code segment down here somewhere in uh, some function, full we'll stop at the start. Um, if we do something like lea load the effective address into rax of my byte array. And then we do um, mov, uh, we'll say bx, because you can't use 8-bit, um, so we'll use bx. Let's say 24, and bt, uh, we'll say a word pointer, even though it's a byte array, uh, rax, and bx. Okay, this right here is actually going to set the carry flag to 1. And if this happened to be something else, maybe 23, like this, if it was 23, then it would set it to 0. Why is this? Well, let's have a bit of a look. Okay, first of all, we'll change this back to 24. Um, this array just here, in memory, let's have a draw of uh, what it would actually look like. So, we might start over this end. Um, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
then I'll just put a colon to indicate that um, that's the end of the first byte. So this is byte number one. This is this byte just here. And beside that in memory is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another eight zeros for the second byte. And beside that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another eight zeros. This is byte number three, which is uh, that one. But beside that, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's not supposed to be a J there. That's supposed to be a comment. Don't know why I bother commenting when I'm drawing, but anyway. Now, so this is byte number three. Just oh, sorry, byte number four. That's this one just here. So we can see there that because it's got the value of 1 in it, um, the first bit of it's going to be set and the rest of it's going to be 0. So that is actually uh, bit number 24. If you start counting from way over here, that's 0. So that's bit number 0. This is bit number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right here. This is uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is bit number 16, just here. And if we keep counting, we'll get to uh, bit number 24, right there. So you can test outside of uh, the size of your parameter. Like uh, We've defined a byte array just here, but um, I'm treating it as a word pointer. But none of that really matters, since we've just jumped outside of even a word. That would be a word right there. But um, with bit scan, you can scan outside of the um, data type's size. So, yeah, the um, register just here, this is only if you use a register. So here we're using BX, and it's seen as a signed value. So you can even count backwards in bits, which is um, pretty interesting stuff. Let's have a bit of a look at how that might work. Let's just, actually, I might just get a new page. Let's make things easier. New. Okay. Okay, of course you can use um, BTC in that sort of a situation as well, BTC, BTR, or BTS to um, complement, reset, or set as well in uh, memory. But um, let's pretend this time in our data segment, we've got uh, my byte array again. Uh, DB. But this time we might actually specify it. Um, Yeah, exactly what it's going to look like. So let's say um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the first byte. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the second byte. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the third byte. 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the fourth byte. Okay, so we've got another 4-byte um, array just here, but we're going to check... Um, we're going to check using the uh, a negative value. We're going to do the uh, bit test with a negative value. So down here in our code segment somewhere, where we've got our procedure. We could do something like LEA. We'll use RAX again. Um, my byte array, but this time we'll increment RAX. And we'll say mov BX negative 1. So... Uh, yeah, the second parameter of a, a bit test is signed. Very interesting. Anyway, BT, um, use a word pointer again, and RAX. It doesn't really matter if it's a word pointer or a byte pointer or, or any sort of pointer. Um, this, just here, um, only has to be the same size as this other operand. So I'm using a word pointer here because I'm using BX. Um, it doesn't matter that we're looking up a byte array. Uh, a word pointer, a byte pointer, Q word pointer, they're all pretty much the same thing, they're just numbers. So the only thing that you've got to do is uh, match this size here with whatever your second operand is. Okay, but what's this going to do? Interestingly enough, uh, this is going to set uh, the carry flag to 1. Alrighty, and if we had negative 2, Um, it would be reading this bit right here, and the carry flag would be zero. So why is this? Let's have a bit of a look. Okay, even though we've specified our um, byte array like this, um, 
this is what this is actually going to look like in memory. Pretty much the same as what we had before. We're going to have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and a 1. So right here is byte number 0. Now I'll call it 0. I should have called those other ones um, 0, 1, 2, and 3 on that other page. I called them bytes 1, 2, 3, and 4, but never mind. So we'll call them 0 on this page. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we put a colon. So this byte just here is um, this one. Um, yeah, the sort of the difference is that um, when you define a byte, you've got your um, most significant bit over here on the uh, on the right. Well, we'll just we'll just keep drawing. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, this is that second byte. Byte number one, or byte index one, and one, two, three, blah 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 blah. blah. Anyway, we end up with um, yeah the other two bytes. So this would be byte number three over here, and this is byte number two in the middle. But um, what we've done just here is we've, we've set um, RAX initially to point right here, and then we've incremented it so it's pointing right here. And for the bit scan, well initially we had uh, a one there, but we changed it to two. So we've set um, not bit scan, sorry, bit test. We've said uh, get this bit just here and move two bytes um, backwards, which will mean that uh, it'll check not this one, but right here. So that byte is moved into the carry flag when we're doing um, this particular one where we've got negative two. Whereas before, sorry, so that would result in a zero in the carry flag. But before when we had negative one, um, we're right at this bit, well that's the start of RAX, and we've, uh, we're have we checking the bit that's minus 1 from that, so that's this bit right here. And uh, yeah, the 1 would be set to the carry flag, so it's a pretty confusing way to um, write it out, but all that you've got to remember is um, when you define an array like this, uh, it doesn't sort of look in memory the way that you define it. Um, you'll have all of these bits, and then all of these bits will follow, but um, this bit right here will be next to this one. That's sort of what I was trying to say before. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit weird. It, it, you can really draw it anyway. Like we said in one of the early tutorials, um, there's actually no directions in RAM, so anything that we do, like what I'm doing just here, is just a abstraction, a pictorial representation, trying to make things easier. I don't know if it worked or not, but um, anyway, so that's um, bit testing. BT, BTC, BTR, and BTS instructions. Use them to test if a bit is on or off. Uh, they move the bit into the carry flag. Alrighty, thank you for listening.